Welcome to the Asia Society Hong Kong Center. I am Alice Mong, Executive Director of Asia Society Hong Kong Center. And I wanted to use this opportunity to tell you about Asia Society Hong Kong's online programming. Since February, we have launched a series of coronavirus updates featuring medical experts and researchers to tell us more about what's happening in the world of COVID-19. Uh, since its inception in February, we have done a series of over 10 programs, and we look forward to featuring other experts in the weeks to come. On the arts and cultural side, Asia Society Hong Kong has hosted book talks, and we're hoping to launch a series on featuring authors and perhaps a book club uh, featuring uh, authors, Hong Kong authors or global authors to talk about their book. So in, during this time of um, social distancing, you can curl up, to, curl up to with a nice book. Uh, other arts and cultural program has been concerts where we're looking forward to collaboration with the Hong Kong String Quartet, uh, as well as concerts with young artists from Hong Kong. On the artistic side, our Asia Society uh, Chantel Miller Gallery will be opening with Next Act featuring artists from Hong Kong. And with Next Act, we will also be interviewing these uh, Hong Kong artists uh, in the weeks to come, as well as featuring virtual tours of the Next Act exhibition. And on that note, we also have migrated uh, Asia Society online, uh, Asia, it's Asia Society store online. So you can feature, you can find books and goods on Asia Society store. We're really delighted that we have another op op collaboration opportunity with Osage, which we have collaborated in the past, and we're looking forward to working with Osage again uh, in the years to come. So thank you for your support of Asia Society, and we look forward to welcoming you back uh, in person or online at Asia Society Hong Kong. Thank you. We are very grateful to Asia Society Hong Kong Centre for offering us the platform to introduce our new publication, Art in the 21st Century, Reflections and Provocations, published under the Hong Kong Act, Act 6. Hong Kong Act, an acronym for Hong Kong Art, Culture and Technology, was established by the Osage Art Foundation as a way to explore creative and critical approaches toward technology and both their possibilities and implications through alternative art methodologies. We would like to express our sincere thanks and appreciation to the Asia Society Hong Kong Centre for hosting this online book launch. We would also like to thank those colleagues who have contributed to this book, including co-editors Sikri Zelinsky and Charles Merriweather, contributing editor Masaki Fujihata, the authors and the Osage team. And finally, our thanks go to the Institute of Creativity at the Hong Kong Baptist University, sponsored by Hong Hinshu Charitable Foundation for their support of this publication. Thank you. Welcome. We would like to launch this book, Art in the 21st Century, as part of HK Act. HK Act was initiated in 2015 and launched in late 2018 with Act 1, Be Here, an augmented reality public art project by the artist Masaki Fujihata. Soon after, in January 2019, HK Act hosted Act 4, a one-day forum with four speakers, Siegfried Zelinsky, Scott Lash, Masaki Fujihata, and Yukui. In the forum, they discussed the interdependencies of art, science, and technology, and their challenges. The success of the forum and audience response provoked us to think of publishing together a book of short essays by the forum speakers, and in addition, other essays by a wide range of writers covering art, photography, animation, cinema, literature, and music. Zelinsky and I were invited to edit this collection as a book reflecting on the history and state of media art today. Zelinsky himself had been engaged with the history of technical media and media communication for the past 40 years through teaching, 
public talks and a range of published books on the subject, he's contributed to shaping our understanding of media technology today. The book is the result with 16 invited thinkers and scholars contributing essays. And together these writers reflect on the power of communication technology today, the transmission of images between generations, the role of images in relation to our memory of the past, the effect of media such as virtual and augmented reality in our lives. And finally, the present and possible future of thinking and making art under the increasing influence of advanced techno societies. We hope these essays offer a timely reflection on the role of art and new media in our lives today. Thank you very much. First of all and foremost, the book Art in the 21st Century is an homage to an artist. Already 40 years ago, Masaki Fujiata started to work in the field, which later had become established worldwide as media art. He was and he is a pioneer in picking up the challenges which advanced technologies are offering for an advanced and critical aesthetical praxis. The starting point for our discussions, for our reflections and interrogations, was one of his latest pieces, or in this case we should better say projects. Be Here uses current digital image technology and applications for the control of places and people to construct an experience of instant archaeology. While moving through special quartiers of Hong Kong, participants of the project are able to travel in a cultural time machine, meeting virtually people from the past, observing them in their everyday life culture and integrate their visual appearance into their own experience of the now. For our book, we use this piece as a starting point for asking some urgent and basic questions about the status of images under the condition of their limitless reproducibility and modifiability, distribution and consumption, about augmented virtual reality and their values as epistemic things, about our future relations to the planet Earth, as well as to telematic machines or the world of intelligent artificiality. As editors of the book, Charles and myself followed the same intention. Our main interest is to ask questions, to provoke us to reflect on future ensembles of man-machine relations and the possibility spaces which the arts can offer within this tensional interdependency. My own contribution is such a thought provocation, both for art research and for education. Prospective archaeology is an experimental praxis I developed in the last decade together with my students and assistants in various parts of the world. It is basically a media ecological praxis. In deep time past of Mondial civilization, we dig out and visit exciting apparatuses, machines, clockworks, musical automata, for example, investigate their inner life and structure and reconstruct them as functioning sensations for today. We try to connect the past presence and their enormous resources with a potential future in which variety and heterogeneity are belonging to the highest criteria for excellence. To find something new in the old, investigate it deeply, reactivate it and let it flourish into the future. I insist on the utopian dimension of our intellectual and artistic work.
Welcome in the virtual space. Welcome in this online presentation uh, of a book which has a promise and a title, Art in the 21st Century. And I have to say that after reading the book, I can confirm this is really a window into the art in the 21st century. It's a wonderful book with wonderful authors and great contributions. In all modesty, I allow myself to speak a little about my own contribution. And I'm very happy and proud that I'm part of this enterprise to take a serious look in the art world of tomorrow. My contribution is on in this wonderful book deals with the migration from image media to biomedia. The thesis is the following. In the 19th century, uh, we invented machines of motion, like train, cars, uh, bicycles. All these machines of motion have been wheel-based. So we created machines of motion who could accelerate our national motion. This was the so-called industrial revolution. And from these machines of motion, we delineated, we created image machines of motion. Let's say from machine motion to image motion. We speak about moving picture, about moving industry, about movies. And these image machines uh, have been also based on wheels, remember? The first film project had two wheels, and there was in between the film strip. Or you had even the camera, the film camera was also two wheels, and you had in between the film strip. And when the speed was like this, 24, 25 frames a second, you created the illusion of motion. So after the machine motions, and we arrived in the 20th century, we arrived uh, what I call uh, image motion, uh, or image machines, or image media. So we can say from motion media, from motion machines in the 19th century, we moved to image machines, uh, image media in the 20th century. And this created a great scandal uh, in the art world. Because with the beginning of photography, it was clear that now the monopole uh, of the artist of creativity was destroyed. His, the artist believed he's the only one who can make a picture. The painter was the only one who could make a picture. It was a class of experts. But now, as Fox Talbot, one of the inventors wrote, Fox Talbot, 1839, he said, I made pictures without the aid of the artist's pencil. He did not need anymore the artist's pencil. He did not need that word from the artist. The machine made the pictures alone. And therefore, the painters and the art world defended for 100 years uh, the autonomous status of art against photography and against media. So already, still in 1937, said, OK, if you believe I'm working on art, I don't care. So in one of his best editions of photography, he called La Photographie de Pala, Photography is not art. But now, the last 50 years, it was possible uh, that media have been accepted as a new form of art. But this new form of art changed also the idea of the evolution of art. The evolution of art was seen as a genealogical model. But this model was built only on the progress of painting around 1900, yeah? beginning with Impressionists and moving forward to abstract art. There was made a genealogical model from style to style. So let's say, the idea of genealogy as a model of evolution in the art was based on 50 years of modern painting, nothing else. But now, with, with the advent and rise of media art, this model does not work anymore. Huh? And many museum directors and many publishers and many authors have probably with it. Therefore, in this essay, I propose a new model, which I call migration of media. Each new medium, each new technical carrier of image and sound has different technical options. For example, huh? The painters always painted a portrait 
of a face or of a half a body, whole body. They never painted a little fingertip. But the French photographer Beaufort, he photographed the nails of the toe. Uh, and Man Ray photographed only lips and only eyes. So with the possibility of close-ups, uh, the, the photographers give us a new picture of the body. And this continued. Photography could not make the portrait of the spectator. With video and with television and with computer screen, you can make a portrait of the viewer. So in real time, the viewer is seeing himself. He has bec he's become a part of the system that he observes. He's inside the picture. This was not possible in the photography and not possible in the film. And not in painting. Therefore, you see precisely, each technical medium has no options for the artist and for the uh, viewer. And therefore, I say, after uh, the imitation of life by motion, uh, we have, in the first 20th century, we have a new idea. Uh, we will move from motion media and image media to biomedia. That means we are creating systems of media built on virtuality of, of storage that follows variability of content and finally variability, variability of behavior. So these three concepts, virtuality of storage, variability of content creates a variability of the medium. That means we're creating media systems that can imitate life. So we're moving from imitation of motion to imitation of life. So picture systems, all media systems in the first century, moves us forward to, the, to a behavior which imitates life, which imitates organic life. So systems of images and sound became viable. They can behave like living systems. This is my prediction in this essay. You can't be serious. Machines that serve no purpose, experiment with no methodology, hairbrain chimps, reckless simulations, our tumor comes in all shapes and size. But it's also maybe uh, what's most lacking in a lot of current work. The seriousness some artists bring to exploring and soaking up technology and their utter reliance on the most recent research lead to dreary uh, outcomes, all alike in their infinite, ineluctable, ineluctable newness. Derision is incompatible with fascination. Deviation and discrepancies, however tiny, and subtle twists and turns always imply a distancing first off between the artist and his her own activity. Humour does not go well with crudeness and the flagrant, flagrantly eye-catching either. You are most more likely to find it in understatement, in discreetly daring bits of bricolage or the fineness, finesse and complexity of creations whose point is not always immediately obvious and can reflect all kinds of perspectives. Humour calls for complicity and an effort. It addresses the mind, which by and large explains its provocativeness. Whether black or blue or wherever it may fall on the color scale, whether dealing in laughter, irony or parody, humour that flushes out the acnet, confronts taboos, all more humour is fundamentally liberating. Always a tad scandalous, 
Humor has a built-in capacity for inspiring criticism and vigilance, something the censors have always understood. As Hugo Ball put it, every bit of wit is permitted in its very lightness and seeming nonsensicality by the most basic questions. It's nothing to laugh about. No more now than back in the Dada days. Hi, I'm Hidetaka Ishida. My text, The Invention of Masaki Fujihata, is about Masaki's Fieldworks series. Nowadays, we all are equipped with mobile media and move guided by the GPS system. But these technologies, are they destined only for hyper-surveillance system? Isn't it time to think another usage of these technology? I think we can discover another praxis or another invention of life, of media, in artworks like those by Masaki. So I tried to illustrate them, these alternative ways of being in media life, and scoring three points. One, another history of media such as the emaki tradition in Japanese culture. And second point, immanentism of images that I named the Hiraki principle of image in Fujihata's media praxis. And third point, body-mind parallelism in an affective ecriture of Fujihata's voice of aliveness. All these aesthetics and ontological reflection, I inscribe them in the problematic that I named the problematic of homo smartophonics, that is, how we can constitute our media life in a truly immanent media condition. In other words, how we can be happy in our new media environment. I'm profoundly convinced that the art is an indispensable for invention of this new condition of human being in technology. And the art is a very vital factor of emancipation for the future of our life. I hope you enjoy the reading.
Hi, my name is Masaki Fujihata. My、uh, relationship Osage in Hong Kong had started with the realization of a project Be Here. The Be Here is an augmented reality project for public space and for public people. Then it was not so easy to launch this project. Because、uh, public space is not、uh, like、uh, museums, because museum is safe. There is no car is running, and also、uh, most of people are already motivated to come to the museum. But、uh, on the street, you know, there are many people、uh, just, you know, crossing or uh, uh, walking around.、Uh, it's so noisy. But、uh, I was so much attracted with the smartphone because a、uh, smartphone is uh, uh, com- uh, comparably a cheap object for the public people. But the most advanced, most advanced technology is always you know, put it inside the smartphone nowadays. So, if you want to use、uh, advanced technology, smartphone is the first choice. Then uh, uh, we try to re knack the human figure who used to live at the corner of the street. Then I wanted to put it on the uh, similar uh, area in the present. So, the, I selected several good snapshots from the uh, uh, internet as a reference to recreate the scene, I mean the time and space, with the b r a n d y and the actors at the special stu- studio equipped with 70 cameras for making 3D m o d e l by using a photogrammetry software. Then the, a moment in the past time to be appear at the street corner in the present would be to override the past over the present. It is an experience for the user that is equivalent to the ghost of the past being summoned into the present by this technology. This Experience of seeing the ghost would be a memorable event for the user, not as just a ghost from the past, for example, like reading a, a novel or、so, so、something, but an experience of the present collapsed or layered or mixed with the past. So it's a new way to mixing up past and present and for generating the present. This experience got me thinking about three issues. So, one is about the history is not the single, so it's a multiple, it's, a, it's very understandable. And the second is the history can only live on by overwriting with the present each time we rewrite history. And the third is about uh, uh, finally, I recognized we all live with the ghosts of dead people who had lived on the same place. And the ghost can be embodied only by a story. So the story is very, very important.、Uh, story is important rather than the technology. But this story is not you know, like a, a, a novel, written text. but、uh, We need to use a new, new media as a new language to tell a story in a new way. So, this is the, the most, most difficult, most also challengeable、uh, point of using new technology as a tool to understand why we are here. So, perhaps the, the book、uh, can explore.、Uh, Uh, more about the technology and art, so you can uh, enjoy. Uh, it will be worth to read for us. <laughs>